Good evening, CC, and welcome all to part 43, yes, 43, of our weekly podcast, The Current View, with the Idol of Hillsborough. I've got to say, the Idol of everywhere else you've been as well, TC. Mr. Terry Curran, what kind of week have you had, mate? Well, it's getting a little bit better. I think we can all see there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So let's hope that um, that it's going to be safe for, 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 for the country to, to open up. Yep. And that we can get back and, and, and have a little a little bit of uh, decent summer because it looks like we're going to have a decent summer. So let's hope that uh, everything's working out for for everyone. Well, I haven't seen the records, but I I don't believe anything that I read, and I believe little that I see. I did see a big, real bright thing in the sky last night that looked like a, an unidentified object, and we were there in our bedroom. Uh, even Tom got out of his bed, a little bit like your Tom. He don't like getting out of bed. But we got the binoculars and we were looking up to see what it was. But you've got to say, from observation, I would suggest that, that April was the best April that we've ever had on record. And, and May seems to be going along that way. And I look out of my bedroom window here where I do the podcast every week with you. And I'm overlooking the Clent Hills, and it's the most beautiful evening that I've ever seen. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. But mm-hmm. can, can I tell you what you might have seen while, while you were looking up yeah. uh, with your binoculars and looking up in, into the sky? Yeah. Without being horrible, because everyone, everyone, uh, when I say everyone, I'm talking about football. Anyone, anyone and everyone what likes football. And we all like, we all like, you know, to play a different way. Yeah. But I'm sure... You might have seen somebody like Graham Taylor or a, a Dave Bassett or a Sam Allardyce or a, playing football and the ball was up in the sky and that's what the, might, the object might have been. <laughs> but it's only a joke and I mean that, I really mean that because we all we all like to play football in a different way. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make people laugh. I might not make some laugh because I'm saying that, but, you know, how it's been for this last two to three months, it's been, oh, I don't know, I can't remember how long it is now, but it's, it just started to wear one or two people down. Yeah, I remember talking to uh, the magnificent Brian Little and uh, Brian telling Great me when, player. yeah, when they Great played at, and manager as well at, at Aston yeah. Villa. Probably Brian, yeah, Brian and, I, and Ron, best two Villa when, managers. Yeah, but when yeah. I look at people like Brian Little, yes, fantastic. They've been good managers, at, you know, at the clubs have been at. Mm. I always remember them as players. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm a great, a great player. I mean, I've I've always said, being brought up Birmingham City, and you, you, you're born and you die of the of the same club, don't you? Most Birmingham City fans think that I've turned Villa, <laughs> but 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 I haven't. But I I love football. I'm a, just a general football fan, and I I've always been of the opinion that there's been two kings of Birmingham. One was Trevor Francis. And the other was Brian Little. I've never really had much to do with Trevor and, and Birmingham City in what I do now, doing podcasts. But I do a regular podcast with Ron Atkinson. I was talking to Ron today. I do quite a lot of stuff with players of Aston Villa. But for some reason, people really generally, in general terms, I'm talking generally, because I did do a, a one or two um, podcasts with Paul Devlin. And Dev's a great lad. But most people at Birmingham City don't want to touch me with a barge pole. But at Aston Villa, they do. So that's just the way that things are. It, 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 sometimes it, you can love a football club. Uh, yeah. And for some unknown reason, because you do something, the, the club turns against you. Yeah. I mean, I listen, Man United, through George Best, will always be in my heart. And, I, you know, I've, that's the only time I've ever been starstruck. Mm-hmm. My name's Teddy Curran, and the press called me uh, Terry Curran. But my name's Teddy. Mm-hmm. Edward, you know, my proper name. Uh, because I, I, I was, George Best was my idol, and said I was a Sheffield, uh, uh, a Manchester United fan. I've never been a Man United fan. I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan. Yeah. But I've always liked Man United to do okay, be, uh, do well, because when George Best was playing, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I don't hate Sheffield United, but I'm not bothered what, what Sheffield United do. But what I will say is this: I've had I've admired three absolutely great footballers. Do you mind what Sheffield United Sheffield United's had? 
three great footballers that this country had what played for Sheffield United. Tony Curry, Alan Woodward and Jeff Sammons. Yep. They were absolutely fan three fantastic football players. Yep. Whether I liked Sheffield United, whether I didn't like Sheffield United, I would, I'd would. i love to watch them and I'd love to watch them play today in today's modern day football if I could because yep. I, I am a football fan but obviously I, and I like to play football on the floor and I know my team, Sheffield Wednesday, at times have been absolutely atrocious. And play. I played it with, with Jack Charlton, you know, but I, whatever they do, Sheffield Wednesday, it's in my heart and I always want them to win. And you always will, TC, because that's, you know, it's inbred in you, isn't it? It's, it you it's know, it's part, of, yeah, it's part of you growing up. But, but again, the football fan inside you respects the other players and you know the other I, teams I, yeah I, I get a lot of that we all know. with Jack we... Grealish because I love Jack Grealish Alan Hudson loves Jack Grealish you love Jack we love the way that Jack plays I don't care who Jack plays for I mean I'm guessing that in 12 months 18 months time Jack will probably be playing for somebody else but I'll still look at Jack in the same light because I love watching him as a football player going back to Jeff Sammons what a fantastic player he was. And um, I can honestly say how much Alan Hudson Gabby. enjoyed playing with Sammy. I'm going to tell you something. What, what, the thing is, we left footers yep. up at, uh, up at uh, Everton. Um, Tony Curry, uh, Stan Bowles, Frank Worthington, lots of them. Lots yep. of them. Dave Thomas. The left footers, for some unknown reason, Barry Beckett yep. hit the ball. Like tennis players do and cricket players mm. and uh, well, cricket, the top cricketers and the top golfers, you wear the ping of it. And when yeah. you, the left footers play, you wear that, you know, you wear the ping of it, mm. you know. So, what anybody ever says to me about any other football team, Leeds United, when I was a kid, got were hated by everybody. Yeah. But regardless of what anybody says, regardless of what anybody says, those players at Leeds United, and no disrespect to Gary Sprake, he was a good goalkeeper, but he, he wasn't a world-class goalkeeper. Because I always say, if to win anything, you've got to world, you've got to have a world-class goal, goalkeeper. Yeah. I mean, they all go about Van Dyke, and I love Van Dyke. I saw Van Dyke up in Scotland, and I said, if he don't play, if he don't play down in Premier League, I'll stand up at York. I was coaching up at Doncaster. But the best thing what ever happened to Liverpool is the goalkeeper. Yeah. Is the goalkeeper because yeah. now he's put them onto another level. You know, but Salmons, Jeff Salmons, not only has he got a great left foot, he's got one of the biggest spades I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. They talk about black, but let me tell you something. <laughs> Jeff Salmons is one of the biggest I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to ask you about people, that. I hope people don't think I'm being rude about it. Rude, but... I'm just telling you what. I'm going what to ask. What a man have you got? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask Goody about that because there ask was him. a there was a game at Arsenal. Now you when, know when, I'm not when, like when, when, when he speak when you ask him when so you ask him that right and then I bet you phone me straight back up and laugh your head off because <laughs> there was a game at Arsenal and. Um, Sammy had had a, f a few too many. <laughs> and they had to tie his boots up to put him out on the football pitch. I mean, he was a bit of a character as well. And and another he, he, what's he doing these days? I mean, there's so many former players that we don't know where they are. And it'd be great to, to link up with them and have a you know a, an interview and get them well, involved in the project. He was one of them what... Uh... They do other things when they come out of football. I think there were him, Jeff, uh, Jeff Sammons, Sammy, uh, Ted Emsley, and someone else. They, they, they bought pubs and you know where, where they did food and they did exceptionally well. Yeah. So I think I think Jeff uh, came out when he came out of the game. You know, he didn't fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. he, he did well for himself. You know, it's funny some people do. They just, you know, once they finish, they walk away from it. In fact, if, I don't think if I'd have had Jock, uh, uh, well, I'd rather have had Jock and Tom, and uh, without, with, with Tom, is is my stepson, but he's, you know, he's, he'll always be classed as much as what uh, Jock, in fact, he gets more than what Jock gets. Yeah. You know, um, when I look at it all, 
they will always, always, it'll always be classed the same type of thing. And all you want is the best for them. To, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I've got step a stepson and a stepdaughter and also four biological kids. And I treat them all exactly the same. You know, so with Sammy, when they walk away from it, they walk away from it. So with them, mm. if if it weren't for them too, I, you wouldn't have heard of me. I, I wouldn't have even gone on face. I wouldn't have even gone on Facebook. Yep. I would not have. And yeah. The only reason why I go on Facebook and I put things on about myself because I want to play the game the right way, my yep. way. Yep. That doesn't mean it's the right way. It's my way. Mm. And at least now I can express myself without anyone trying to belittle me yep. as a manager or, or or the press, you know, uh, because again, Hudson Curry, uh, Stan Bowles, Frank Worthington, these were all great players. Yeah. Uh, if they'd have been playing in Europe, we'd have looked at we we would have looked at them, um, the superstars. But in England, I promise you. And I don't want I don't want to be horrible to, to, to managers, but I'm telling you what it was like. Yeah. You know, you know you're not a clown. Uh, if you want to be a clown, be, go to the circus and do it. It was wrong. Mm. It was wrong. And regardless of what anybody says to me, you can work all you can work all day long on, on defending defending football. But there's more teams get relegated by playing defensive football than they do attacking football football. And no one will convince me on that. I suppose, I mean, we we always have called those players mavericks, but what I would also call them players are world class players. And you, they have you, proper world class yeah, players. You, right there. You got, you've also got to put Charlie George and uh, oh. and Rodney Marsh into uh, to that category, and obviously, Listen. of course, George Best, who is the greatest of them all, and Dennis Law. Yeah. I would always put them into it. Bobby Charlton. You know, different different yeah. type of personality, but absolutely fabulous football player. You know, we've had we've produced him in this country. We have yeah. produced him, but make no mistake, Charlie George. I mean, he's my, my second football player. You're just breaking well, up a bit too favorite, soon. Jim McCallion is my favourite Sheffield Wednesday player of all time. Like he, obviously, people know that. Yeah, and Jim McCallion got great great ability, but you know that was me watching. Jim McCallion. Yeah. Uh, well, I played against Jim once at uh, Southampton. Mm-hmm. George Best and, and Charlie George were absolutely superstars of of football. But you know, Jim McCallion, we bought him as a, as a record signing as a, as a yeah. teenager. Yeah, he did. Yeah. You know. Yeah, from Chelsea. You know. And, 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 but if I, sp- I mean, I speak to Jim now on Facebook. But if I. If you sit down and talk to him about, you know, managers, and it's not that you want to criticise managers, you just t- you tell each other what you what you felt and yeah. what you felt that, that uh, if they did hold, hold you back or if they did encourage you to play, you know. And when I look at him with the ability he got, that kid, mm. as a kid, I should say, I mean, he's, he's, he's older than me, but when 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 you say when when I look at him as a kid. I bet the managers held him back. If he if he tell the truth, because I mean I I, I try to, I do tell the truth. I don't I try to tell it. I tell mm. the truth. But when I, when I tell it, I'm not trying to be horrible to that manager. I'm trying to say I, that's how, it, how I felt. Yeah. But but at the same time, that's how life was. Society yeah. was in those days. Yeah. You know have... when we're all growing yeah. up, you know, it was a hard life, and you know if you did something wrong, you either got a clip round arrow or you you grounded for a for a week or a or a month and at football it was similar you, you would be out at team if you didn't do what they told you to do mm. yeah and if you didn't do it you you're a bad man why would you have to be a bad man if you weren't you know you didn't always agree with someone yeah. uh, of their opinions but you're absolutely right too six I remember Ron Atkinson telling me about he went to uh, to Wembley and he, he watched uh, watched Laurie you now. Laurie Cunningham was one of the greatest wingers that, that we've ever produced. And yep. Ron would say to me, Laurie could run on snow and he, he wouldn't leave any prints. Laurie was that good. And and he says to Laurie, How, well, Laurie, why did you play that way? And he says, well, that's the way the gaffer told me to play. 
And and that's the thing with football players that fans don't understand and appreciate largely, that you're told to play in a certain way. And again, it all comes down to the philosophy of the football manager. And if you're a, a player that likes to express themselves and go out and do things on a football pitch that others can't do, you've got to really align yourself with a manager that believes in you and allows you to go and play in that manner. Well, I'll tell you this now. Speaking on that mm. on that level, what you were on about, what you what you're on about, is that as players, you want to express yourself. Yeah. You know, you don't want to let the manager down. Mm. I know I never wanted to let the manager down. Like I've told you all, I loved Jack Chow. I mm. hated the way how we play football. Yeah. But I went out to play football. How he wanted me to, how he wanted me to play. Mm. The balls were it over top because I was quick. He wanted me to chase the ball. Mm. You know, I was a better player than that. Yeah. I was a better player than that. I, I wanted the ball. I could, I could, I could pass the ball. I, you know, I remember reading. Uh, I'm saying reading. I remember Jimmy Greaves saying to me, "You know, you very rarely give the ball away." When he came to interview me after after games, when he because he, he used to he used to write for the Sun. Yeah. You know, uh, w- when you talk about players, they don't want to let the team down. They don't want to let the manager down. But the the one. They want to do the right things. Managers sign players what they, managers sign players what they, they think they can trust. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to do things at a football, and our manager would try and belittle me. They say, you know, the press would ask him a question, that, the manager a question, and I really, I'll tell you this now, it used to rile me. Mm-hmm. You know, inside I used to be so angry, and and my background I I came from I would I want to knock I really wanted to knock him out, Gabby. That's how mm-hmm. I felt. I'll yeah. tell you that now. But there's nothing you can do because you, you, you've you got to control your temper as a football manager. And, and what I'm trying to get across is that uh, these managers, they want you to do certain things and you were doing them f- for them. And they, said, they, turn down and say, they turn down and say to the press, well, how do you know, how can we tell you what he does when, we don't, when he doesn't know what he's going to do? Mm. Again, if you go back to the Sheffield United goal, and that's a plain, forget the goal, completely forget the goal. If yeah. you go back, YouTube that mm. and look mm. at it, <clears throat> and you'll see me. I'm thinking, what, what? I'm thinking, how can I get the ball into the box to create mm. a goal? How can I get a, a, a shot off at goal? And th- this is what's going through my mind. I'm thinking, if I go away from the goal, they're happy at that because they want me to go away. They know there's no danger. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, I'm thinking I need to get the ball into the box to, you know, to try and get a chance mm-hmm. for, for, for centre forward, or I want to try and get a shot at goal. You know. So the, these managers always in England we dra- we we sign what they think the safe players mm-hmm. instead of signing the players what can unlock a door, what yeah. can unlock a defence, what can pull people out of position. And the reason why they fail a lot is because what they're looking at is a safe player, yeah. not the player what you know what's going to do the un, uh, unorthodox thing, and the, what the opposition don't know what they're going to do. But what a manager would do, they, they would try and belittle that player by saying, you know, uh, we don't know what he's going to do. So how does he know? He doesn't know what he's going to do. So how do we know what he's going to do? Mm. You know, I knew, I knew everything I was going to do. I don't blame anybody for my footballing career. I did not have to play at Sheffield Wednesday. Maybe when I look at it now, and I'm, I'll always be glad I played for Sheffield Wednesday, but when I look at it now, my name doesn't stand up like the great players, your bowls and, and curries and that because I went and played in third division. But I, it, mm. the thing is, no, but what I'm telling you, Gabby, it does. And the reason why, it never bothered me. If I'd have played at Halifax down, because all I... I was a kid. What played football? It played in, in, in school playground. Took me, took his jumpers off and played, and that's all I wanted to do. I want to win. I want to win. Yeah. I don't want to let anybody down. But the managers, because they they hadn't got my ability as a players, as a player, and I questioned them. They they didn't like it. But I promise you, Gabby, I would mm. never ever a trouble causer ever ever. All I questioned when I questioned the manager, it was for other players when the manager used to get onto him and their philosophy. I used to think that why did you sign me when I don't want to play that way? Yeah. I do not want to play that way. Well, what's wrong with that? Tell me. 
the, I mean, does the, that make me a bad lad? No, the, the, there's nothing. Can, and the, the thing is, I know that you say that, that, that you're not remembered that way, but for thousands upon thousands oh, of fans, we do remember. You know, there's if you look at the history of football since, say, for instance, the Second World War, how many players do we really, you know, revel Gabby. about? Not when many. I say that, you're I'm not one of myself. no, but you're one of those players that will always be remembered because you had something that other players didn't. Same as Charlie. Same as Andy. Same I'm, as I am ab- I, Listen, I am not knocking myself. And no. there's two of us yeah. what played in the third division. Maybe yeah. three of us what played in the third division. Yeah. What are remembered? Do you, do you know who the two are? Well, I remember Tim McDougall playing for Bournemouth in the uh, third division. Yeah. And uh, Ted went on and had he's a, not, a great he's career. The, he, he's not the. He's not. He, he's not one of them. What I was thinking. There were two main ones. What played in the third division and and and, and got big names and still remembered. Well, I mean, uh, Alex Abella that, that played against you that day was an Argentinian no, you, international. You're not. You're not, you're not going to get him. I'll tell you who they were. Go one on. more. Uh, Rodney Marsh at Queens Park Rangers. Yeah, he was, was yeah, in 1967. Yeah. And the other. Yeah. And the other one. The other one was uh, Don Rogers. Yes, Me, Don yes, Rogers. 69, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, when he went to Manchester City, he, I thought he'd done all right, but they didn't win the league. They were hoping they were going to win the league. Correct, yeah. When when when, when he went to, to Manchester City. Mm. Uh, and I blame Mal- Malcolm Allison more than anything. And I don't mean that to be horrible to managers. I, the reason why I blame him, because he was always thinking beyond and above ty- different type of things. And you've got to look forward yeah. and not look back. But I think he went too much beyond, you know... Too, get get me players th- to think too much about it than than uh, thinking about what should be happening at that moment mm. in time. So those were the three. We were the three play, players that we, we're still remembered now yes. by playing at that level. But if, if I have anything, if I do have a regret in football, is that I didn't. I, I should have played at the highest level, uh, and my name would have stood up amongst amongst them all. And that includes Charlie George, who I love, mm. all of them. I guarantee you that. Curry, Hudson, Bowles. My my name would have stood up with all of them. I don't give a damn what anybody because I do believe in my own ability, right? But it's never going to stand up mm. when you're playing into a division to a first division. Lot, I it, slightly it, disagree I know, but, with there, Tisa, well, because your name I, still I know, does you, stand up. I know where you're coming yeah. from, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, the pundits will turn around and say, yeah, but they didn't do it in first division or Premier League or whatever it is. When I went and played in first division South and Derby, I was just getting over injuries, but I did well. Yeah. When I went to Evan, I didn't play many games, but I did terrific. Yeah. I did terrific. I was just getting over injuries at, the, at those two clubs, you know. But I mean, I love Chris Waddle. Absolutely fantastic right football player. But I wonder if Chris Waddle and David Hurst could have done what I did in third division. Because it's easy to play with good players around you, Gabby. Absolutely. 100% easy. It's easy. I wonder what they would mm. do playing in third division. I agree. Totally agree. Because, and I love I loved all the lads yeah. I played with. I've, that's it. I don't give a damn what anybody says to me. I've always stuck up for players. Always. Mm. And I've been left in shit. When lads say to me, what you're earning, I tell them the truth. Mm. Because I used to say to myself, I'm a, I'm a lad from a, from a working class family. 18th family. Right? And I always believed in equal, equal, equal rights, you know. So if they said to me, what you're earning? Oh, I'm earning 300 quid. Say it's Sheffield, I'm earning 300 quid, right? And I remember Tommy Dockery on about Peter Schultz earning 200 quid, uh, 250 quid, he wanted to pay him at Man United, yeah. and they wouldn't pay him that. I would earn 300 quid at, at, at Sheffield Wednesday, at Derby, and at, for, and at uh, Southampton. And I said to lads, they said to me, what are you earning to? And I said, yeah. And I'd, they didn't believe me at first. So I said, yeah. So I said, I should all be way back Thursday. Yeah, that's what it is. There's some clubs it was Thursday, some clubs it was Friday. They say, yeah. I don't think like it is. They say, you know. So I always stuck up for the lads, mm. you know. So I had a fantastic career. I loved me. Whoever I played with, obviously, to play with people like Alan Ball, um, Charlie George, and McFarlane, and all them, and Robbo, and Ian Boyer. Uh, Sheeds and Reed, I mean Everton Reedy let me tell you about Peter Reed. he's the best player I ever, I ever played with at Everton Reedy uh, Sheeds were a great player Mountfield Gray 
they're, they're all fantastic football players, Trevor Stevens. You know, Reedy? Yeah. Reedy was the worst trainer you have. Listen, I've been at all. I have been at 13 football clubs and played with some absolutely fabulous players. And people make me laugh about Reedy. All right? He was the worst trainer you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. He was one of the biggest drinkers you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Right? Uh, but come Saturday afternoon, I am um, listen, even me, what I think, I, I do think about the, the game. I, even me, I look at him and I think, how does he do that? Mm. Right? He couldn't run. He was the worst trainer and he was a big drinker, but he was the best player I ever played at Everton. Do you know why? He understood the game. Yeah. Right? And he didn't have to get down the field, but he ran more than what you think he did on a yeah. Saturday because what he did do, Gabby, right? He was in areas where the ball would go yeah. or where the ball would finish up. He controlled it. He understood the game. Mm. And he didn't give it away. Yeah. I mean, people they laugh and they say, well, he did hit a 35. Why do you want to hit a 35 yard? You only mm. hit a 35 yard ball to switch it. I, listen, I like Gerard and I like Lampard. Yeah. But if you're, out, if you're up from Gabby and I hit you a 35 yard ball, right, especially how they play modern day football, what do they do? Mm. They play one up front. Yeah. It takes some getting up there to get support up to, support up to that player. Yeah. Reedy. Really, understood the game he didn't give the ball away mm. he did not give the ball away he was on top of people when they got it and when we got it he was in areas to receive it yeah and he just gave it and did the simple thing here give it give it give it never give it away mm. he was he was way and far above anybody else i played with at everton way and far above them and going back to what you were saying about the third division, I, I do get what you're saying, because people also said that about George Best when he scored one of the greatest goals ever scored when he was in the NASL, because they were saying it wasn't, you know, it was against the inferior. But it doesn't matter where you play, where you score, how you do it, it's what you are as a player. And class will always rise. And you'll always he, rise too, so you were class. Well, listen... And I'm not knocking myself. What I'm trying to yeah. say, what I'm trying to say is, I understand how people would think. Mm, yeah. You know, none of us, not one of us in England, Curry, Bowles, any of us would be on the same par as, as George, because George yeah. were on a different class. They'll all Absolutely. tell you that. But they were fabulous for Absolutely. I could watch them as much as I could watch George. So, though, you know, yeah. but George, George had got that looks about him. When he got the pulling power of uh, of the Miss Worlds, with the rest of us are pulling at his looking birthday, his Worlds, you know. Uh, but George, uh, the other players were absolutely fantastic. Fant- and you're right, he don't make a difference where you score goals, right? As long as you're at football, and that's what I, w- I was happy. But I w- at the same time, I was fighting some of the with the philosophy. You know, and I understand that they, it's, it's their life. They, you're breaking up, see, a, sl- what, you're breaking up sorry, a bit too, see? What they do, they want to be successful for, the, for the, their night, so to, to try not to get, try not to, to make sure they get beat. Yeah. And I, I get that, Gabby, I really get it. Mm-hmm. But I, like I said, if you look at all the teams that get relegated, the, the, the ones that get relegated most are the ones that defend more than, a, than, the, than the other teams that's near at the bottom, I guarantee yeah. you that. 100%. Five of the best TC, we're going to go Argentinian um, on, on this podcast tonight. So who's your five best Argentinians that you've seen in your lifetime? Right, the five best. Or right. your favourites as well. Could, could Might not be your best, but your favourites. All right, so I'm going to go. Are you ready? Yep, go on. From five to one, are you going to go? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go from five to one. Okay, go on. Let's see if we duplicate our answers. Vicky Villa. Nope, I didn't have him, but he was a great player. Yep. Osvaldo Aldiles. He is my number five. Yep, go on. Uh, Carlos Tevez. No, didn't have Tevez, but great player. Right. Ernan Kespo. Yep, brilliant player, but not in my top five. And Gabriel Bat- Batistuta. Is that your top five Argentinians of all time? 
I tell, I tell boys, I said, I want you to write these down for me when you sent me that message. <laughs> Listen, absolutely, absolutely fabulous players. Brilliant, Brilliant. all of them. Absolutely fabulous players. Right, here's my all-time best, all-time Argentinian best. Go on. But to leave them out, yep. I would still feel disappointed for me to leave them out. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, the, I'm going to give you my best five-time Argentinian uh, players. Daniel Passarella. Great player, yep. Sergio Aguero. Brilliant player. Mario Kempers. Brilliant player. Lionel Messi. Yeah, unbelievable. And the god of football, Diego Maradona. Just phenomenal. That's me five. Now, before we, we, we're going to... Just before uh, you... Before you I, said to, I said to the boys, I want you to write me these down. I bet you... I bet you it can't be. Just down the Because I'm not married on a mess. I, I thought you'd been on the sauce too, so to be fair. I have. I've had a bottle of wine. But I... But I, I because we, we, we spoke on the phone. Yeah. You were having a glass of bed. I was having yep. a glass of wine. Yeah. And I said to the boys, uh, when I, I looked at the phone and I went, oh, Five of the best Argentinians. So I said to Tom, write these down. And Thomas said, I can't spell them names. I said, I'll, t- I'll tell you. <coughs> Thomas is not a bad speller, like, you know. I yeah. said, I'll, I'll get you them in a minute. Um, but that was my best five. But what about what the what about the other five I've just left out? Oh, Absolutely. just 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 phenomenal. I mean, Juan oh, Sebastian yeah, Veron as well. Veron yeah. was a oh, was a great one. I could listen. Yeah. This. Stacks more I can mention. Oh, stacks. Some some brilliant. Absolutely. My my top five are in fifth place. Um, Osvaldo Ardiles. I thought Ardiles was just a tremendous player oh, and yeah. you know World Cup winner in that 1978 World Cup uh, finals in Argentina was was just different. Class all the ticker tape coming down and and I thought Ozzy. As he just controlled the game from midfield, and then when Spurs bought him after that World Cup finals, he was um, he was everything that you thought in a player when you watched him close up uh, in in England as well. So, Aussie's number uh, five for me. Mario Kempes, who I'm, I believe narrowly got the number ten shirt ahead yes. of Diego Maradona in in seventy eight. Kempes yes. was a great player. Again, I, I don't think Argentina would have won the World Cup without arguably Leopold, Leopoldo Luque, who was his strike yeah. partner, and uh, Osvaldo Ardiles. I thought they were the, the three top players but, but in that team. But at the same time, Olin, And Passarella as well. Oldham was absolutely a brilliant team. And, and it's in cup competitions, yep. one mistake or a bad game and you've lost. And they were an absolutely fantastic team that that Holland in '78 as well as. I think if they would have yeah. had Johan Cruyff there, I think they'd have won the World Cup. I think that would yeah, have been the it, difference. But Johan didn't it, play. It, it, it wouldn't. He didn't go. Would he? He, he wouldn't. To no, go. would he? Refused to go. Yeah. There are a number of reasons that I've read that he, he refused to go, but I'm going to go with the one that I believe to be correct. Um, being a, a, a socialist and having social values, he didn't like the way that Argentina was being run and decided politically yeah. not to travel to Ar- uh, Argentina to play for Holland. And that, that probably stacks up more than any uh, reason of Johan Cruyff reading and, and uh well, not knowing the guy, because you don't know, do you? But you read things about him and you then yeah. draw your own conclusions. Conclusion, yeah. In in third place was um, Gabriel Batistuta. I think in um, in modern times, I know we've got um, Sergio Aguero, who's absolute top drawer in different class. But um, I was a big lover of um, Batistuta and plied his trade around Europe and um, certainly, certainly yeah, Fiorentina and for Argentina, the national team. I thought he was an absolute thorn in England's side. Every time we played, I used to dread if Batistuta was playing for Argentina. In second place, I would put uh, Lionel Messi, because I think Lionel Messi is different class. One of the greatest players that the world has seen. Wouldn't be my top 10 in the world of, of all-time players, but Diego Maradona would probably be not in the, um, the the top three, but probably the top one yeah. in terms of natural ability. I think well, Maradona, in, again, for what I've seen in my lifetime, Maradona is the most naturally gifted football player that I've ever seen take a football absolutely, pitch. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, 
is is another thing about me. Yeah. I come from a mining village called Kinsley. Yeah. Right. I sat on on, on to my dad's settee watching England win a World Cup. Yeah. I go and play uh, with Alan Ball. Mm. I'm bought by Jack Charlton. Yeah. Who's a World Cup World Cup winner? I was an. Uh, Bobby Charlton, who was manager of Preston, when I was at Doncaster, tried to buy me to tried to buy me for Preston. Yeah. Huh? And then when I went to Derby, I played in a, a, a pre-season uh, tournament in uh, Madrid, Atletico Madrid. I played against Luque yeah. and Kempes. Yeah. Right. What won the World Cup in '78? Yep. So it's amazing, you know, when I look at my life mm. and I look about me being stupid with it and playing third division fo- football. I played uh, with a World Cup medal. I was bought by a, a World, Cup, World Cup medal manager and I played against two of the World Cup players uh, of Argentina, uh, Luque and Kempes uh, in Spain in a tournament. It's funny how you look at your life and you think, you know, w- would I have expected that? I may have dreamt it. Mm. But for, it, but for it to happen, it's incredible. But it did happen, you know. Uh, so the little things like that people can't take away from me. No, they can't. And I, I can see another book, the uh, the Current View book, with different things that we do on the podcast. The, you know, the different, you know, um, five of the best that we do, the, the history of all, you know, a little bit of information yeah, about, we, about I think players. We might do that. I think we might settle down and do another book. mm you know the, yeah. uh, the 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 different beyond the lens, the the, the pictures of TC, which is where we're going to go now. You and Bernard and the Bay City Rollers. Let's elaborate on that a little bit, my boy. Well, I will tell you, our Bernard <laughs> is absolutely hates football completely. Does he really? Yeah, com- yeah. Uh, I've got a brother called Peter, but absolutely, I know he was a fantastic goalkeeper, but Tony Kelly. Uh, a lad from my village who, who was his big mate at the, you know, at school. Yeah. Said he used to tell me now, David, he was a great centre forward. Mm. But Barnsley wanted to sign him. Uh, he was a fantastic goalkeeper. Uh, John, he's the eldest, so I can't remember much of him as a kid. You know. Yeah. I don't know if, but he's never been one what played football. I can remember. Mm. I know Peter played football. Terence was. Absolutely useless at it. Alan was useless at it, but he liked rugby. Uh, Melvin was crap at it, but he was like lightning like me. Yes. Uh, so there were me, David and Peter, what were any good. Bernard loved music and he loved dancing. You know, oh. he was, you know, he'd get up on, you know, he's the one what's, um, he's a showman at house. You know, yeah. he, 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 he craved all the attention. Yep. You know, he'd get on a stage and he'd want people to see him and he'd be dancing and that type of thing. Anyway, uh, when I got transferred to Nottingham Forest, there's, there's hundreds of fans outside. And I mean hundreds of fans. And the sound for me is I've come out to, out at players' entrance, uh, then all of a sudden all these fans are here. And obviously they're coming for autographs. And I burned and said, don't you want my autograph? <laughs> so they said, who are you? He said, oh, I'm, I'm Terry's brother and I'm a famous tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was one of them, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, on way to Jim and Jean, we went to uh, uh, Jim who worked at Pitt. Yeah. Now, this is how rich Jim was. Bawtry, I don't know if you, you'll not remember what, Bawtry, there used to be a, an advertisement in, 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 in Yorkshire for Bawtry caravans. And Jim and Jean lived in a massive bungalow with uh, with land as big as a dog track. Yeah. Right? When I was a kid, Dappy, we no central eating. Honestly, we had a tin bath. You know, there'd be icicles hanging off at window. Yeah. When I went to live with Jim and Jim when I played for Doncaster Rover, they got central eating in dog kennels. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm seriously. Right? I can remember getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, 2 o'clock, they come and woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and they said to me, uh, they, they had grounds and everything. Uh, and they said to me, uh, the bitch is having some pups. We need you to get up. Right. It goes, honestly, Dad, I swear to you, on my deathbed, on my yeah. deathbed, they've got central eating dog kennels, beautiful house and everything, and they've got a place in Tenerife, you know. 
uh, not an apartment. It was a bungalow. Yeah. Right. So we we gone to a bungalow. It was a, not the windy side of Tenerife. The other side of it. Yeah. Right. There's a windy side and the Porto de la Cruz. I'll tell you where we were. Porto de la Cruz. And we were up, up further up into the mountains. Anyway, we've gone down into Porto de la Cruz itself. We obviously get talking, having a few drinks, bum, bum, bum. We've gone my way a little bit now. I've has gone his way a little bit. Anyway, we meet back. We, we get, we meet back up again. You know, once I meet back up, we didn't tell him back, but we, we come back together again. And he said, uh, I've been talking to two birds over there. And I've been telling them, yeah, I'm last McEwen out at Bay, Bay City Rollers. Right? <laughs> So I never thought nothing of it. <laughs> nothing of it. Boom, boom, boom. You know, we finish up going home at 11 o'clock. We've gone, gone home at 11 o'clock. Go, don't forget it's 1974. It's not like now, yep. but it's all hours. Yeah. You know. uh, gets back to uh, the bungalow. We sat there having a drink in bungalow. We're getting all this commotion screaming outside. When I say screaming, I'm telling you, <laughs> screaming. Right? Uh, so Jim... Goes and opens doors and he sees all these girls outside. He thought, What's going on here? So we goes outside, <laughs> right? And he, honestly, when I say to you, I'm saying 20 girls, there might have been, there might have been 30, 40 girls screaming, Gabby. And I'm not joking with it, I don't mean screaming. Right? We, when we go outside, I'm thinking, What's going on? I, I'm thinking to myself, What's going on here? And I'll burn, and he's always laughing at, and acting about, you know. And he said, uh, oh, I tell them we're, we're out at Bay City Rollers. So they must have got to told them that they, uh, they, uh, you know, the friends, the mates, the girls. Yeah. Uh, and he tell them where we were. And there were all these girls outside. So that, that's what I, I better put it on today. So I, I, I saved the photograph because I, I haven't got it. Yes. You know, so I, I, it's the first time I've seen it. I've seen it when I go to his house, but it's the first time I've seen it for a while, to be honest. And uh, he put it on today, so I, I got it, saved it, and I, and I put it on. And I was just thinking, uh, 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 the, when I saw the photograph, the first thing that came into my head was, right, uh, the girls coming outside the house and screaming, thinking we were Bay City Rollers. We had to tell them that we weren't in Bay City Rollers. <laughs> at first, they wouldn't believe us, right? But they, that, that oldie Gabby, right, our burning is absolutely useless at any sport. Any, and he loves to, he loves tennis, but he's useless even at tennis. He serves like, uh, not like you would serve at tennis. He serves when he just knocking, not throwing the ball up and just knocking it over. You know what I mean? Yeah. We finished up playing in a tournament in 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 in, in, in Spain, and they got a, they got a, this big cup in Tenerife, and it was built like the European Cup. Uh, and I'm just going to say it was a five. I don't think it would have been a fiver. But whatever it was to enter that tournament, they tell us if whoever won it won this cup. Yeah. Right? I mean, it beset us in them days. So it might, it would have been a fiver, but it, a fiver in beset us. Yeah. Say we're 25 quid to win or, or whatever it was. 25 to win, so much to second and so much to third and so much to fourth. And whoever won it kept the cup. But I was a good tennis player. Yeah. Right. And I won that. I won that tennis tournament. Right. But when I won it, it was all in paper. I've got a photograph. I've got a photograph somewhere. I've got to try and find that. I don't know if I've got it here or whether Jock's got it at, uh, at his mum's house. And uh, when I won the cup, the, the, oh no, no, you can't keep the big cup. We, we give you the smaller cup because there were some Spanish people in it. There were, there were some Germans, uh, Dutch, Swedes. All the all the type of uh, people, what were in it playing, and I won it because I was a good tennis player as well. As. So what but was Bernard doing? Well, well, <laughs> well, well Bernard, obviously. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? What is he doing? Was he doing an holiday? Well, it was a singles tournament that you won, so Bernard yes, wasn't involved in like a doubles because you wouldn't want Bernard in a doubles tournament oh, no, with you, would oh, you? By the way, yeah. With, by the way, the one who a doubles, we got knocked out for sound. They yeah. were useless. Yeah. They were completely. He's useless at any sport. But music <laughs> is music, and by the way, his music. No. Yeah. His music's all right for a laugh, but when you all, you know, when all lads are pissed up and enjoying themselves, and yeah. you know, not bothered about what they're doing, his music compared to the rest of us. You know, but but he loved, he did love music. He loves all sorts of music, and he, he'd get up. He's one of them what wanted, to, you know, he'd get up floor dancing. But what, 
we we did play uh, doubles as well as we got yeah. knocked out in the first round at that. But uh, that's what we're doing in Tel Aviv because you know. Um, G- Jim and Jean said to me, "Do you want to take anybody with you?" So I asked our Bernie, "Did he want to go?" So that's why our Bernie came to, came to the, uh, came in holiday with us. But it was a fantastic holiday. But when I saw that, the first thing I thought to myself, I can't, I can't believe it because it just brought memories back. Yep. It just brought memories back yep. <laughs> with all these girls outside screaming. Damn it! I swear to you, if it was unreal. It was unreal because they, I better to tell them that we were basically rollers. And that's so they the th- got and told the mates and they gave up 20 of them. I'm saying 20. I bet there were more than 20. I bet there were nearly 30 or 40 girls up there screaming about it. But that's the thing in those days. We didn't have the internet. So, you you, you know, why wouldn't you believe what, what Bernard had said? <laughs> but you go, hang on a minute. Ain't the Bay City Rollers Scottish? They don't sound Scottish. <laughs> and you'd then you'd go on Google, like wouldn't you? Them, you would, no, you, you wouldn't. Think, not in them I days, no. I would say that someone yeah. general, you wouldn't, would you? No, you would well, not. You not in those days. There was an innocence about everything, wasn't there? Yes, what you told, were, you believe. There were two young lads... Uh, Fit lads going out enjoying themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, one or two people. There were obviously one or two people there from Doncaster that knew I was playing for Doncaster, <laughs> right? But our Bernard, like I said, you know, he he got to but oh, don't you know me? I'm a tennis player. Yeah. I'm his brother, but I'm a, I'm a famous tennis player. You know, because he embarrassed to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it didn't bother him. Once I got in a football field, I didn't give a shit. I did not give a shit. Come off it. I just wanted to be a quiet, normal kid. Our Bernard would crave the attention. Yep. You know, not in a, not in a, a big-headed way. I mean, he's got... In a laughable don't forget way. These, yeah. Don't forget these, these eight of us. I and mean, We've all got... We're all opinionated, all yep. of us. And we've all think different. You know, but... Uh, not in a bad way. It was just that uh, our burner would do. He'd just kid him on, you know. Uh, because of the people around me, he'd say, "Don't you want to? Don't you know who I am?" Yeah. You know. But he, but he was brilliant because then they'd ask him for his autograph. Mm. Why are you? Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he loved it. You know, he absolutely loved it. A, sh- a showman. A showman. Yes, definitely Top- a showman. Definitely Top- a showman. Topic of the week, TC. Um, Touching again upon football, we usually start with it. We're going to, uh, towards the end of the podcast, we're going to talk about it. But the Bundesliga looks as though it's going to start. Could be this Saturday, could be the Saturday after. So the start is imminent. In England, it's not so. But we've got sterilised balls, players wearing face masks, uh, masks, excuse my uh, my language there, um, neutral grounds that we're playing on, testing for COVID-19, no relegation and a shortened game. This just doesn't seem like football as we know it, does it? Well, I'm not going to be like all oh, oh, this, yeah, because I've mm. never been like that, but I'm yeah. not a bad kid. Yeah. I'm not. I will never hurt anybody. Mm. That, pack it in. Pack the game in. It's pathetic, isn't it? Until it's, until it's yeah, ready. And I'm I not, agree. But when I say this, I don't know the man. I am not saying he's a bad man. Mm. We've all got problems. I like to bet. I like the woman. You know, I, mm. I didn't drink, but I, I, I would never like for training. Yep. But this Professor Ferguson, what he's done, and tell us what to do. Mm. And I don't, I don't want to be. I don't want people to think audible of him. I really don't. Mm. But this, this WhatsApp, this pandemic, this pandemic. There's more to this than meets the eye. Hundred percent. He gets, he gets. He's, he's supposed to have had this COVID, mm. and then he goes off with his mistress back to his house. He yep. has sexual intercourse, and she's married with two kids. Mm. And if it's as bad as what they're all telling him, it, they're telling us it is. We're talking now. We're not talking to Terry Curran. We're talking now to a scientist. Mm. A scientist. What knows? what's dangerous and what's not dangerous. So is it as dangerous what they said? Now, people's going to scream at me for this, right? Because these people died and I feel sorry for them. And I hope I hope they don't take it the wrong way. What I'm trying to say is, you know, the ones who have died more than anything else is the vulnerable and the elderly. Mm. Now, I'm sure if, if Professor Ferguson 
And if he's had COVID and he, he, he's gone and brought the rules of what he's telling everybody else to do, it surely it's just not as bad as what he's saying it was because the mad cow disease was going to kill us all. Yeah. AIDS was going to kill us all, weren't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Swine food SARS. Look, mm -hmm. it's bad. Yeah. And it's bad. And I apologize to anybody what's lost somebody. Mm -hmm. I really, really feel for them. Right? But if you're going to play any sports, then forget it because. I'll tell you, I'll say to you, I don't want to, Gabby, I'm not interested in you. I'm not. Mm. Because at the end of the day, there's no point in playing playing with masks. It's 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 a joke. It is, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's, it's a complete, I've been looking at the, the, the American politics. And the way, reason why I look at that is because of uh, whatever happens in America, it happens mm. around the world. You've got the mayor of New York going, going 10 miles with his bodyguards yep. into parks, telling us what we can't do it. Mm. Chris and Andrew Como, Andrew Chris uh, Andrew Como telling everybody that he, he would find anybody if he didn't wear a mask. Yet he's yeah. talking he's like two less than two meters away from somebody not wearing a mask. Yeah. Chris Como is it looks as though he's dying one minute and he's showing you it because he's got no makeup makeup on. But so when they go into the studios, then he looks as though he's dying and he looks ill. Mm. Yet he's down in his basement doing his gym work, going out, helping with the construction of his house, right? And then, uh, and then coming back. Oh, now I'm clear. And he, uh, best thing is since I spent, and he's, he's he's wanting to fight other people, yeah. he's telling us what to do. If it's that bad, why are they doing it all wrong? Why are they breaking the rules? Mm. And if we break the rules, we're wrong. And I don't mean that to be honourable. Mm. And I understand people. Some people have a go at me because there's going to be there's going to be so many people. What's going to have mental health after this is finished? Yeah. It's going to be unreal. Mm. It's going to be unreal. There's more to this than meets the eye. And even my friends, I'm sorry, even if they don't like what I'm saying, there's more to this than meets the eye. And that's my opinion, and I'm sorry about that. But we've we've always said that, haven't we? And, and you know, I, again, we know that there's something that's going on and has gone on. And, and, you know, we have to look at people that have died in hospital, situation of lockdown, not just in this country, but other countries. But what's actually gone on, we 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 don't know. I but there is a surgeon. lot, a lot more. I agree with you, TC. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot more than we know. I think that we were led to believe 2% of what, what they want us to believe. I think the other 98%, we have no idea about what really is going on. And I think if, if governments were so open about and transparent about what's going on, or what's going on, or what's going to go on. Why do so many people have to sign an official secrets act? I don't believe in Labour, but I've always voted Labour. Yes, I may. Because my dad, because my dad, would, my, my dad yeah. always voted Labour, mm. and that's what I did. Yeah. And as you get older, you get a bit more wiser. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to say about all this, what, what I find absolutely unbelievable with it all, they're telling us this, that, and other. Right? Mm. In 1989, we had four vaccines. Now we've 11. Yeah. There were never, there were never no swine flu. There were a cold and a flu and that was it. Mm. Now we had SARS. Now we've got COVID-19. We we've got swine flu. Mm. Right? In 2015, and I'm not, forget whether it was Obama, whether it was Bush, whether it was Clinton, or whether it was Trump. Because I'm for every, I'm for the working class people. Yeah. In 2015, right? It must have been stopped in America, research, and they've given money to Fauci, who's give it to the Chinese, to two labs in in China, mm. 3.7 uh, 3.700 million dollars, right? And now we've got another outbreak. So we've had AIDS outbreak, we've had swine flu outbreak. We've had SARS outbreak. What's going on? What is happening? Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone truly knows. And you know, out of the the, the pandemics, the three bad pandemics that we've had um, worldwide uh, over the last hundred odd years, we've we've had um, cholera has been another one. 
we've had the yeah. f- we've had the flu. So, you know, we've got this in 2020, 2019, 2020, in 1919, 1920, after the outbreak. Well, after the First World War had finished, we had the uh, the flu um, pandemic, and then a hundred years before that, we had cholera. Well, cholera is a horrible disease, and and you would think, I mean, smallpox has been eradicated from the planet, so we're led to believe, but but. Cholera never has. Ebola hasn't been eradicated. It just strikes me that this this caring world where we're trying to find vaccines to cure everything, we certainly overlook certain things. So I just don't think this world is as caring as what they want us to believe that they are. And that's always my standpoint. Why? Well, the elite, my standpoint is mm. the, the elite yep. are causing these problems. I would agree. For what reason? Why? That's, I don't you know. know. Mm. Um, Control. What's the guy? Uh, Amazon guy. Oh, what's his name? Bill Gates. No, no, Amazon. I don't know. I don't know the Amazon. Zuckerberg. Is it Zuckerberg? Are they Facebook Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg? Right. He, he's made t- ten million pound a week since since this has been closed down. Yeah, don't I, look, I'm not interested. In, I am not. Look, anybody who makes money, good luck to him. Mm, yeah. Good luck to him. Right. But it's funny how these these people, these globalists, mm. didn't uh, for some unknown reason want to do well for them. Yeah. Right. Bobby Kennedy, Junior. Whose father got assassinated? Yep. He now is telling, is saying things about all these, and he's a Democrat. Yep. He's a Democrat, right? I'm not interested in whether who's right and who's wrong, but I'm interested in mm. what's right for the people of the earth. Yep. Because I would not believe any of them. I'll go with the um, green. What is it called? I don't Save know. The carbon footprint. Yeah. He's I... made millions of pounds yeah. on yet. Yeah, they tend to. Don't well, they? We all, do yeah. you think that we all don't want clean water, clean earth? Do you think? Yeah. Does anybody think that we don't want it? But most countries in the world haven't got clean water and clean earth, and that that is my fundamental point. If they wanted to, we could all have clean water. All these African countries, they could have clean water. They could have cholera eradicated, Ebola eradicated. But the the truth is, what happened? They don't happened? want that. What happened? What happened hmm. to Band Aid? They made millions of pounds. Yeah, exactly. Bob Geldof, yeah. Bob Geldof, uh, a Bono, screaming blue murder. Mm. I'm not going to swear. Get your money. Get your hands in your pocket. Get the money. They'll never want water again. They still want water. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. So, I don't know. Brilliant by Bob Geldof. Brilliant by Bono. Mm. Right, don't get me wrong. Right? Why haven't they got uh, running water from taps? Why? Corruption. Because I said, if we got all this money in, we can do it. We could yeah. we could put pipes through and everything else. Yeah. There's more to it. Listen, these Hollywood elite, yeah. they've been a cover up for a mm. lot of people. Whether people like Trump or not, right? Let me tell you something. If Trump does wrong, put him in jail. Yeah. But he's opened up a can of worms with these globalists, and it's all going to come out now. It's all going to come out with Clinton, the lot. George W. Bush, another one. All this is going to come out. But let, let's hope the truth does come out and people exactly. can live in peace. And, you know, instead of having a divisive world, we can have a we world have that's it. inclusive of everybody and, and we can help everybody. And we can we can we can say that, you know, with lockdown, people have learned to live without foreign holidays and going out and doing whatever we've we've done. And, you know. In a, in a world that, that has so much money and there's so much natural riches and resources, there really isn't any reason on this planet why a kid in Africa cannot have clear running water. water. Yeah. Listen, at the end of the day, if we, you know, there's always going to be the bad in any walk of life. Absolutely. And in, in any race. There's always going to get the, 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 the odd. Two percent, whatever it is, but in general, majority of people get on, get yep. on, and that's what the world's about: yep. getting on it and helping each other. To, but to put up with all this shit we put up with, yep. you know, it's un, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Anyway, 
your ass will be going absolutely ballistic and my two boys will be getting on to me. I know. I can hear the, I can hear <laughs> the vac room, the vacuum firing up as we're talking. TC, she's chomping at the bit. She's ready to plug it in. You know what she's like. You've seen her in action, mate. <laughs> so it is time for us to say goodbye. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Love to you and yours, TC. It's my pick this week. And hopefully next week we have got some football and we might not be able to predict it because we don't know if it's going to be played. But when it is played, we will start our football predictions up again. And I'm guessing that it will be the Bundesliga, followed then by other leagues in Europe. So I think that they're all looking at Germany now and yeah. seeing how it's going to pan out. And let's be truthful, if other leagues don't start up and the Bundesliga is say three or four weeks on other leagues in Europe and the world. Fans want to watch football. There's a lust for football. They're going to get into that Bundesliga. They're going to get into their teams, into the players. And, yeah. and you know, it could be that the Bundesliga is the team that, that fans it associate with. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 100%. The yeah. yeah. And then players want to go and play over there. And the riches that were in the Premier League have been transferred out there to Germany. Who knows? Well, it's a fickle sport. Listen, it, it could happen that way yeah, because there's do. talk about taking pay cuts and everything else. So yep. Let me, it might, I mean, Italy were the one that had all the money. Then it's come to the Premier League. It yep. might be very far to, to turn it away from the Premier League. And then there's a lot of players in trouble. Well, there will not be players in trouble because they just go and move abroad like they've like they've done here to the Premier League. Look, good luck. Uh, thanks, everyone. What do listen to it? I pre- we all appreciate it. We're still looking for a sponsor for us. Love to you and your uh, your family. I love that little hour before or half an hour before we started, Gabby. Uh, you were having a glass of wine. I was having a glass of wine. Uh, and I've enjoyed this hour. So look after yourselves and thanks, everyone. And we're trying to get a visual aspect to the, the project. And we have got other players involved in the project. We've got big Ron, Ron Atkinson. Um, Brian Little. Uh, well, yeah, we don't do so much. We've I've done ones with Brian and with Peter with and you've done, with others. Yeah, I've, I mean, I'm doing one with uh, with Keith Birch in tomorrow as well, and and I do regular one, but I'm talking give regular. Keith my, give give Keith my regards, will you? Will do, yeah. But the, you know, the main players are Big Run Atkinson, yourself, Terry Curran, and and Alan Hudson, and be, between the two of us, there, well, three of us, Udi, yourself, and uh, you know, and and the the podcast that we do together and collectively. You know, we've had over 250,000 listens, which is an awful lot with no help whatsoever by by promoters. Because that's what happens, guys. People get marketed, they get promoted, they pay a fortune, and that's why they're in the the public eye. And that's just the way that the world is. So we are looking for someone to help us. Word of mouth is better than anything, but in the long run, we'll be the best out there. Well, we just do it because we love it, too. So it's a lovely hour. We we love it. And we're going to go out this week with my friend Binky Womack and Lisa Love and do it again because that's what we're going to be doing next week, TC. Brilliant. Enjoy yourselves, guys. And let's hope that football's up and running within the next month. Here, here. Bye-bye. Cheers, TC. Thank you. Bye-bye.
want my compliments I'm just digging on the clothes you wear I'm just a man now, don't you fear I want to love you while I brought you here I want to 